Good morning. So this is kind of a last minute video, but um, I had gotten a question last night in my inbox about uh, someone's friend that has two sets of cremated remains for um, some family members and they look drastically different. Um, one looks more like an ash and the other one is really grainy and has kind of grit to it. So wanted to just address what cremated remains should and usually look like because I don't want somebody worried about their loved one and whether it's them and why there's a difference and so hopefully um, even just for this one friend that needed that question answered uh, it will hopefully alleviate some concern. So I think we need to look at the process of cremation a little bit um, and I'll do a tour of a crematory coming up here um, in the next uh, week or two as well uh, which hopefully answers questions. But So the cremation process um, does not turn somebody to ashes. The word, using the word ashes is really um, uh, lending, putting someone down the wrong path essentially in their mind of what cremated remains should look like. Um, cre even the word cremains is a slang term. It's a slang term that the funeral industry has created and even using that is not the best term. Um, funeral directors shouldn't be using that typically with um, families because it's slang. Um, and I think it's it's just good to use, and this is my opinion, it's good to use the words that you should use. It's You wouldn't refer to somebody's loved one as a corpse, you know, so um, cremated remains is the, you know, technical term and it's what should be used. Um, so when the person is put in the retort, which is the actual machine that the cremation takes place in, um, they're typically in a casket or cardboard box of some kind. They are in something usually, um, and that allows the person to be kind of uh, moved into the retort. There's no rollers. It's just a concrete inside of this oven essentially the retort and most people call it the oven if they don't know the technical term for it and so to slide them in there they use um, that cardboard box or casket or something to allow them to move them in easily um, to go in there they can be embalmed they don't have to be embalmed typically jewelry is removed um, if there's a pacemaker or a defibrillator that is removed as well because those do explode in high heat and do a lot of damage to the retort. Um, so then the cremation process ha starts and it takes about two, one and a half, two hours sometimes. Um, it's kind of an average, uh, depends on if it's morning or afternoon. So in the morning, the retort is cold and so it takes a little bit longer. In the afternoon, if several cremations have taken place, just like in your oven at home, it's already warm. So something may cook a little faster at home in your oven, just like that heat is going to cremate someone a little faster in that retort. I'm going to use some, um, I'm going to kind of just throw out words and I'm not trying to be offensive as I'm talking, um, but I'm trying to break this down as kind of simple and r relatable as I can. So I'm not comparing sticking your mom in the oven to a casserole. So try not to take offense to this anybody as well. So um, after that process takes place and the um, doors open, I posted a picture on Facebook to kind of um, relate over to some pictures. There is a lot of large pieces of bone that are in there. The cremation process is mostly done by the heat of um, the flame that's in there. It's not done by the actual flame for the most part. And so there's a lot of large pieces of very porous bone left. And so those are all pulled out. Um, but a large, it kind of looks like a, a, a hoe that you would use out in the garden, just like um, to scrape and pull out every piece of bone, every piece of what is turned to ash out. And then it's put into what's called a um, pulverizer. And that's one of the other pictures. It's the large metal jar looking unit. That has a large blade in it. So all of those cremated remains are put in there and then they're pulverized. So if you get two sets of cremated remains, one may have been pulverized a little bit longer than the other. So they may have 
broken more of those chunks of bone down into more of an ash-like state than others. Um, it just depends on the crematory. It depends on who's operating the equipment at that time. So there's definitely um, some differences with that. So that's why you can get two, two completely looking different um, types of cremated remains back, even from the same um, crematory. So after they go through, well, I'm, I skipped one little step. Before they go into the pulverizer, um, a lot of times you, when you're looking at the cremated remains, if someone has had any um, surgeries or medical implantations, I and mean, you can see a large metal hip joint or things, and those are just picked out. Um, sometimes they're cut, sometimes they're thrown away. It depends on what the family wants as well. But typically a magnet is run over that way if there's any little staples or screws or things of that nature from any medical operations. Um, you know, like I've had my gallbladder out and I have staples inside still. And so on um, x-rays, you see all these staples that come up. Um, so if I was cremated, those would all still be in there. And so you would need to remove those because um, your loved ones want you know, just you back from the crematory. Um, and so, and a lot of people even ask too, well, what about that casket? You know, I don't really want the ash from the casket back. Well, the heat is so intense, it burns all that away. It burns away everything but that basic chemical compound of your bone. Um, and so that's why it is gritty, it is um, chunky sometimes, that cremated remains, and um, so like on the movies where you take and you just open it and it blows away in the breeze, that's not the case. A lot of it's going to just fall to the ground because it's heavy and it has, you know, it has um, substance to it. And honestly, I hate to compare it, but kitty litter is the best thing. It's a little ashy. It's got some chunks. Um, if, you, if you touch it, it kind of dusts up at you because that's exactly what cremated remains do. Um, so in the amount of cremated remains is one other item I wanted to touch on. So you could have a little 90 year old lady who weighs 90 pounds and a 200 pound man and you may get the exact same amount of cremated remains from both of them. It's not about weight of the person, it's about bone structure because all of the adipose or fat is all burned away, all of the skin is gone, so it's only the structure that's underneath that makes up that cremated remains. So I think a lot of people are surprised by the weight of cremated remains when you get them back and by, and by the amount. I would say three to four cups is generally a, a minimum of what you're going to see. Um, uh, the standard kind of um, temporary container that comes back from the crematory is about the size of a small shoe box. And, um, I mean, I have had individuals that fill that and we have to have a second container for um, additional cremated remains. Um, sometimes you just have, you know, two cups or three cups, um, depending on the size of the person. Children, babies are obviously going to have less. Um, babies, if you have maybe one or two tablespoons, is about what is um, returned for, with a, for an infant, for a baby. Um, of cremated remains, um, but uh, there's little urns for those and um, see a lot of that. So um, don't be surprised if you are working with a funeral home to cremate a loved one and maybe your loved one was heavier. Um, there are charges for individuals and it's typically above 300 or 350 pounds. The crematory does charge more. Some people will say, well, that's not really fair. That's not, you know, the loved one's problem or um, it's not their fault. They shouldn't be charged more. Well, it takes a lot more work and it takes a lot more staffing and planning to cremate an individual um, that is over that, that weight. The fat on a body burns just like oil. So someone has to stay and watch the whole time that process is happening with a really heavy individual because once um, kind of the body starts to cremate you have to turn the machine off because a large fire can start because that fat on a body like I said acts as oil and can start 
um, up too large of a fire in the machine. So it's something that does take a lot more time, a lot more staffing, so they do charge more for that. Um, so don't be surprised if you're sitting with a director and they do tell you that it's going to cost more because the person was a little bit heavier. Um, and it's not something I like to talk about, but it's something that I think you need to be educated and maybe know so that way it doesn't kind of slap you in the face when you're in the situation. Um, so I think that covers everything I wanted to touch base on. So the pictures that I posted, the one is of the inside of the retort right after cremation. And it's a picture of, I think these are the pictures I posted. I, I downloaded several pictures. I know I only posted four. Um, the retort and you can see the chunks of the bones and then there's a little numbered disc um, up close and that is the little metal disc that stays with the person throughout the whole cremation process. Um, I talked about that in my other cremation video but that's what identifies to anyone who sees those cremated remains who that person is. It's what they're numbered at the crematory in all of their records. All the records for that person have that number on it and so if cremated remains are ever found or anything you can track back to the crematory and track back to who that person is. The second picture is the pulverizer and then the third and fourth picture, they may be out of, out of that order, but are just some sets of cremated remains. Kind of the standard quantity um, that comes back and kind of what they look like. Sometimes they're really white, sometimes they're really dark gray. It all just depends. So I am going to have some tours, I think. Um, I've had some interest shown and I may just go and um, do a little tour at a crematory and show you hands on what is there and what that retort looks like, what the pulverizer looks like. Um, and then I've had some embalming questions, so I'm going to do a um, tour of an embalming room, I think, um, just to kind of show you what's in there. Without anybody's present, obviously, we're not going to go down the the gory, um, you know, go down the blood side and, and show that, but just to kind of show what um, is in my surroundings when I'm in a prep room embalming. So, uh, thanks guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.